the Knicks are set up to win a championship in the next two to three years. No, seriously, I know it sounds crazy, but here's what I mean. They're one of the few teams that can follow the Lakers rebuilding plan. The Lakers missed the playoffs for years, had players who were just too young, then bam, a superstar chooses them, they trade for another star, and they're on top again. The Knicks are in a position to make that happen. For as poorly as they've been run, they've got a lot of money and draft picks. Those tools can bring a title soon if they use them right. It is off-season Wednesday on AM Hoops. We are previewing an epic off-season for the New York Knicks and explaining how those tools can become a chip. Hey, it's Casey. Welcome to AM Hoops. Welcome to Offseason Wednesday. We are breaking down and looking ahead to all of the teams that are not invited to the Orlando bubble. Check out the playlist for other Offseason Wednesday uh, videos. So hit subscribe if you don't already and notification bells coming out with five videos per week. Also check out our new AM Hoops shirt. It's called Threes and it gives props to Ben Simmons. Everyone in the world wants him to shoot threes, but he doesn't and still dominates. Buy a shirt, support the channel, link in the description. All right, now to the Knicks. And every offseason Wednesday starts with the basics. Their draft pick, a 9% chance at number one overall, but most likely it'll be pick six. They also have the Clippers first round pick. Cap space, as much as 57 million bucks. They have a ton. Their needs, shooting, playmaking, veteran leadership, perimeter defense, and coaching. Relevant free agents, like basically half the team. So the Knicks hired an ex-agent to run their front office before their season ended. Leon Rose hopes to be like other ex-agents who have made the transition. Bob Myers of the Golden State Warriors, the best example. Rob Palenka of the Lakers has done well too. So here is Leon's list for the offseason that we're gonna run through. First, the draft, then hiring a coach, and finally, trades and free agency. So let's start with that draft pick. Now, I've heard some people say that the Knicks should trade up for LaMelo Ball because they have the tools to trade up and they need a point guard. That would be a horrible idea. Now, I know the thought of LaMelo Ball in the Knicks uniform at MSG is exciting, but think about the fit on the court. Yes, LaMelo can play make, which they need, but he can't shoot, especially threes. And that would not be good next to RJ Barrett and Mitchell Robinson. They need to think about their spacing and they need to hold on to those draft picks and not trade up. We'll get to that in a bit. So instead, they'll probably pick around number six. And I think they should go for Obi Toppin. He is not a guard, which they need, but he does provide that excitement that the fan base would love, and he can shoot. Toppin is the best offensive player in college basketball, and the Knicks ranked second to last in the East in offense. Next is coaching, and who Leon Rose hires here will say a lot about his plan going forward. There are 11 candidates for this job right now. There's development coaches like Kenny Atkinson, Mark Jackson, Chris Fleming, and guys like Tom Thibodeau, the front runner, or Jason Kidd, who are more veteran focused coaches. Now I am on the record as saying they should hire Tibbs, but I've changed my mind. They should hire whoever the stars want them to hire. That means Ty Lu, who hasn't been rumored yet, but sure, Jason Kidd or Tom Thibodeau, who doesn't have an awful reputation with stars he's coached like Derrick Rose. The bottom line, they need to focus on veteran players not a development coach for young players. Teams like the Thunder or the Grizzlies are young player teams. They build through the draft and develop. Teams in giant attractive cities like LA, Miami, New York can cheat the system. They can steal the best players from those small cities and win titles right away. The Knicks have to take advantage of that. They have the money and the picks to do it. They need the right coach to attract stars. So with the draft and coaching out of the way, let's get to those stars. First of all, if you're not on board with this whole stars idea, then you're not down with winning. Stars win championships. It's not debatable. It's a fact. I like your little cute, exciting, young, regular season roster, but have fun in Cabo. The Knicks are one of the few teams that can follow the Lakers path. The Lakers had a championship level player come to them without an established star already on the roster. That like never happens. I don't even think the Knicks can do that. So they need to get an established star on the roster to attract that championship player. And they have got a lot of great tools to do that. 
The Knicks have seven first round picks the next four years. If a star wants to leave his team, like, you know, Anthony Davis, Paul George, or Kawhi Leonard have recently, the Knicks can pounce. They have enough cap space for any max player this offseason or next to create a star duo. So first, the trades. And here's why Chris Paul is not gonna be on this list, okay? He costs too much damn money. If CP3 was on the Knicks, that could easily take them out of the Giannis free agency in 2021. Kawhi is up that year, Paul George and others. They cannot risk that, even though Chris Paul would be a perfect fit on the court. He is not a perfect fit financially. Instead, no one on our list is even in the top 18 of highest paid in 2021. So let's rank these trades from worst to best. Number five, Drew Holiday to the Knicks for Taj Gibson, Julius Randle, and three first round picks. Drew is on an expiring deal, assuming he turns down his player option in 2022, so he's only worth three first round picks. This is the exact reason the Knicks compiled so many first rounders. They can afford to give up three firsts, two potentially high picks, and not hurt too much. The Pelicans do this because Let's be honest, Drew did not rise to the occasion this year as the team MVP, and Zion has emerged. Drew solves the Knicks point guard issues while being just good enough to attract another star. Trade number four, Victor Oladipo to the Knicks for Julius Randle's expiring contract, two first round picks, and one really high second round pick. The Pacers might have to do this deal to balance their salary cap, and Oladipo's health, recently not going to the Orlando bubble, might convince them to deal. Yeah, he would be a risk for the Knicks, but it's also why he's so cheap. Stars go for way more than two first round picks. Anthony Davis cost three first rounders. Paul George was traded for five. Oladipo for two first round picks is a gamble worth taking for the Knicks. If he pans out, he's a great fit in terms of shooting, playmaking, and leadership. But most importantly, other stars would love to play with Victor Oladipo in New York. Trade number three, Devin Booker to the Knicks for Julius Randle, RJ Barrett, and six first round picks. The Suns would never give up Devin Booker under control for four more seasons at 23 years old, unless you blow him away. Devin Booker's name has been in headlines linked to the Knicks recently, and people have laughed at it. This is an actual response from a Western Conference executive. Lol. That's why the Knicks would need a godfather offer. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. R.J. Barrett and six first round picks is an offer they can't refuse. The reason he's only number three on this list though is I'm not sure he's enough to lure the biggest names to New York. Booker doesn't have any playoff experience, but our next two guys do. Trade number two, Bradley Beal for Julius Randle, R.J. Barrett, Iggy Brasdikas to make the money work, and five first round picks. Another example of the Knicks sending young talent plus a lot of picks for a proven star. Before you say it's too much, Knicks fans, the Clippers did this. They sent five picks plus Shea Gilgis Alexander to OKC. Because of that, Kawhi Leonard followed. The Knicks should absolutely pull the trigger on this trade if possible. When he's motivated, Beal is an all-star and durable. In 2018, he played all 82 games as an all-star and he would be a great fit in New York. In trade number one, Damian Lillard to the Knicks for Julius Randle, RJ Barrett, and five first round picks. The Knicks give up their most promising young player, but this is what it takes. With Damian Lillard locked in for five more seasons, another star in 2021 could join. Free agents that summer are LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. The Blazers get Barrett to build with a haul of picks, the price here is a little less steep than for Devin Booker because Dame is a little bit older and he makes a lot more money. So those trades are how the Knicks use one of their two big tools, draft picks, to build a team that a star might want to come to. But their other big tool is cap space. So here are three free agent signings they could make this offseason. Number three is Mike Connolly. Connolly would have to opt out of his $34 million deal in Utah but he would if the Knicks offer him one last decent deal. They can negotiate a longer deal for less average money and still be in play for 2021 free agents like Giannis. With Conley, they get a veteran leader and playmaker with playoff experience. His shooting has dipped this year, but you know secretly he would love a change of scenery. 
Free agent number two, Bogdan Bogdanovich. Now here's one of the most wanted free agents on the market. That means there might be a bidding war and that might take the Knicks out of this. But he is a shooter and a playmaker at times. If Bogdanovich is willing to move to point guard, his shooting would definitely complement RJ Barrett. Now, Bogey's never played point guard as a pro, so he's not our number one free agent. Plus, like I said, he could get expensive. But free agent number one for the Knicks, Fred Van Vliet. There is not another player better suited on the free agent market right now for the Knicks. Van Vliet is a two-way player and a proven winner. He would start at point guard and provide good shooting and playmaking. He literally fills every single need for the Knicks. The trick would be paying him maybe a little less than market value to preserve that 2021 cap space. And of course, the final move here to make Leon Rose king in New York is to attract that championship level player. Is it Kawhi Leonard? Is it Giannis Antetokounmpo? I don't know, but it will be no one unless they use this offseason to build a one-star winning franchise that just needs that finishing touch. Support AM Hoops and click subscribe. Don't miss a daily NBA video.